Hey Gwenters, welcome back for another episode of Gone Gwenting. Today we are going to cover the next installment of the week by weeks. Um, I know I was a little delayed last week, um, so Monsters is posting late. You can still use that if you're using them this week. Uh, that's why they still went up. I actually had made a Skelga deck I was planning to post, and obviously that no longer applies for multiple reasons. The hotfix, or Skelga nerf as it might be called, uh, being predominant reasons for that. So, uh, but this week I want to cover Skoyatel. I just want to say, to preface this, I don't know that there is a great Skoyatel deck um, where you can use Etne. I know that they've changed the requirement to being just win three matches, but I do want to cover Etne. I do want you to see how she can be used. And this, in my experiences, is the best chance you might have at winning. I do think now, though, that Skoyatel is one of the hardest factions to get traction with. Um, I, even against Firesworn decks where I use Row Punish with Crushing Traps, it's, it's still hard to get traction. So let me just run you through this deck real quick and we'll jump right into it. So a lot of this deck is going to revolve around hand boosts. So that's why we're going to use Enchanted Armor here. It gives us some flexibility with several cards that you're going to see. Um, and then there's several nature cards, but there's only seven. So this isn't like a really heavy deck where you might use Herald Gourd or, uh, or the Elven Sages. Uh, there's a different deck you can use for that. If you're interested, let me know. I'm happy to post it. Candidly, I've had less success with that one than I have with this one. Um, I think the point slam and the ability to pace in first round are really helpful. And then with the final point slam of Aglaeus is kind of the big keys for this deck. It does make it a bit draw dependent though, so just be aware of that. Um, and then a few things that you could do to tweak this deck just from the top. Uh, Mystic Echo I like. I don't know uh, honestly whether or not I like Mystic Echo more or you can actually use Precision Strike and then sub in uh, the uh, the Broccolon Rangers. Um, these ones. Broccolon Sentinels, sorry. Uh, and use them. It gives you a good weeding card, helps improve uh, the statistical likelihood of getting a Glaeus into your hand. Also gives you a decent removal tool, which can be pretty helpful. Um, I am not the biggest fan of Nature's Rebuke. It just doesn't seem to work for me when I want it to work for me. And that when I need it, it's not in my hand. And when I, when I don't need it, it's always stuck there. So um, that's kind of where I am on that one. But, uh, but otherwise, I think Call the Forest is going to be a, a consistent draw for you. Ethne, obviously, in the final round is going to give you Symbiosis with two young Dryads. So a bunch of points from Nature cards. Ithlin is going to give you, or Ithlin is going to give you a boost to a Skoatel unit by four. So if you can get the boost on a Glaeus, that boost will go to eight points, making this a 13 point card. So not the biggest jump in the game, uh, and maybe not my favorite 11 point card, but it works and it plays well with this deck. Um, Frexinet also works well. I do want to say you can replace him with Sheldon Skaggs as well if you want to go a little bit broader. Um, I've found less success with Sheldon, but he can work for you. Um, just note that Frexinet can only boost a Dryad, so I would remove him if you're adding Sheldon, especially if you're replacing uh, Aglaeus with Sheldon. Uh, Sheldon is a lower provision count. He does do damage, so he has removal ability, um, and he has a higher base value too. So if you're just trying to go for kind of like quick points or you're concerned about the boost going to the right place, he might be a good alternative. Again, though, I've had better luck with Aglaeus. Um, Moren works really well as a uh, damage and lock card. Triumph Boar, obviously, with Milena, I think is one of the better combos for Scoyatel for persistent damage. You could also sub in Pavko. Um, Pavko just comes in at eight provision cost, so he's a little bit more expensive, and he doesn't get you uh, Harmony procs on the Trained Hawk um, on Melee Row. So if you're using Melee Row Hawk for some damage, it doesn't work quite as well, but on it, you can switch out these ones. Either way, they kind of all play for the same in my experience. Uh, Hawker Smuggler works pretty well here for the boost. Um, and then we have Mahakam Defenders, who if they act, if they take that boost instead of Aglaeus, that's going to work well because they're going to boost themselves. They also work well with Tempering. That'll give them armor. <clears throat> so I really like them. And then Dryad Matrons can give you some passive boost. If you have both of them in a round, they can play really well. Um, and additionally, 
uh, they will, if they boost up uh, Aglaeus at the end of the round, it, that will occur before Aglaeus boosts herself, right? So, a uh, pretty good combo that you can use with those Dryad Matrons, um, just to add in another two points, um, because they boost her by one, and then she gets, that doubles that boost. Uh, Dryad's Crest with the Purify and the Hama Dryads are very key to success here. I do think um, if you wanted to make this more of a nature-based card deck, uh, you might think about adding in some of these other cards, Nature Rebuke being a really good example. Um, Water of Broccolon I think is pretty useless now. Harmony is basically nerfed into Oblivion. Um, and Forest Protector, I don't love this card. Um, I know I haven't built it, but just watching it play, I mean the best you can do with this is basically a nature's rebuke which plays for a total of 12 points with a five point removal which is decent but you have to have played nature's rebuke in the first round and again it just it just doesn't work for me um circle of life doesn't work that much better but at least it gets me a two boost uh which is worth again uh the three point damage two point boost plus doubled to four points so this card is worth the same number of points in the end as nature's rebuke but i don't have to have a treant to play it to so uh, i i just like the flexibility of that card more though i am only want running one of those so this card is pr this deck is pretty weak on removal it does have a lock it does have dunka uh it does have uh it does have trained hawk but that is definitely one of the weaknesses of this deck basically the goal here is to just outpace your opponent in first round um, but to be 100% honest with you, this isn't like the winningest deck of all time. This is, in my opinion, just the most fun Scoia'tael deck to play at this moment. Um, I am a little bummed out that the Hotfix didn't do more to kind of make a more fun Scoia'tael deck to play with. Um, again, Harmony is nerfed into Oblivion, and Symbiosis is not an adequate replacement, in my opinion. Um, the amount of setup you have to do before you can use your nature cards is a little obnoxious. Um, I think that they tried to copy what was working for Firesworn, and I know that the last graphic I posted in Gwent today, this last Sunday, showed Firesworn, uh, showed Sco uh, Syndicate as having a lower win rate. Candidly, I think that's because people were using old decks. The new Syndicate, as we're just about to go up against, has some really high top value in points, uh, is very playable, has a lot of flexibility, uh, and I've seen some pretty fun stuff. I'm going to need to save up some scraps to make that deck, and that'll probably come out next week. Just be aware of that. So Hamadryads are a must retain. I, I, you just can't fold these back into your deck. It's the same with Shaping Nature. This combo, Hamadryad Shaping Nature, is the best new combo, in my opinion, in this entire Gwent deck. Uh, Hawker Smuggler works pretty well for us. We do get to go first. So the big priority for me is to draw Aglaeus, which we do. And so the rest of our focus will be on Aglaeus. We have Tempering to go well with this Mahakam Defender. Uh, we also can get that Hawker Smuggler out. Moren is a decent uh, control card and then Circle of Life is gonna play really well when he spawns any of the, the, the footmen or the, um, especially any, any of the token units. So I think here we're gonna just go ahead and use Hawker Smuggler. We don't need to use the boost yet. I don't like to tip my hand too early, but I mean, we know exactly where this is gonna go. It just plays for six points on Aglaeus, so there's no reason not to play it on her. The only other exception might be if I just need to get a good engine out in Mahakam Defender, but I think Hama Dryad is a priority for me this round because I do want this Echo card working for me. But this Circle of Life card is going to work really well against this fire, Eternal Fire Disciple. He's going to keep getting Fee. He's going to keep trying to boot to spawn those Fire Sworn Zealots. So this works well for me. And again, I know you're going to want to get that Dwarf boosted. Just believe me when I say it's worth more points on a Glaze. And let me know in the comments if you have a correct pronunciation on that. I guess I should look up the phonetic... Uh, I, but it's the it's the umlaut over the eye, so I guess it would most likely be aglais, right? So it just takes me too long to say. <laughs> All right, smuggle is a weird card. I don't, I'm not sure that I love it. <clears throat> I mean, you get three coins and you spawn a unit, so I guess that's a little bit of an improvement. But to me, I think I'd rather have congregation than this card. 
mean, it does give you some coins, I guess, but I'd rather have that congregation. This, the swarm capacity for, for Fire Sworn is just immense this season. I have noticed, though, um, never to be super worried about... Uh, you don't really have to be worried about um, removal. There's not a lot of removal cards. I think Jacques is Salamandra in final iteration. Um, but uh, the Assault Salamandra crime card that can do up to six points usually just doesn't. Excommunication is a fantastic card. Yeah, see, so yeah, Congregation is only four provisions, and it's worth six points so long as you have another Fire Spawn unit in the middle, right? So, great combo for him. Really smart move. So you do want to use this uh, Shaping Nature. You want to use the boost and the Vitality. Um, basically, you just want to think the Delta on that is two turns of boost. So as long as Hamadryad's going to be out for two turns, she'll go get boosted by nine points. Because every time she has vitality, she's going to boost herself by one. So if they have a purify or something like that, it can be problematic. But most of the time I found pretty safe to just drop that down on her. She gets boosted by seven right out the gate. Remember, she was at five because she was pre-boosted by this hawker smuggler. Um, but it's just really good combo. Plus you get this wandering treant as well. And this worked out pretty well for us. Um, the only thing I'd say, we're already down a card. So we probably just want to throw something away here. I'm thinking probably this tempering, it can be good with the defender, but ultimately unnecessary. So we might have wanted to use this enchanted armor before if we wanted to push, but I'm going to tell you this. Um, you don't really want to push with this deck in second round. It's a hard deck to bleed with. Every time I try to bleed with it, it stings me. Um, and it just plays well as a long round uh, in the final round with all the nature cards. This also puts another nature card into my uh, into my uh, graveyard that I can use with uh, with my leader ability. Plus, I get an extra boost from Hawker Smuggler because I'm passing for two turns. And as you see, that's working out pretty well for us. So the, there's a lot of carry over here too. I I think um, if it wasn't for Ethne, you could probably replace her with All God. Um, you know, he boosts three units in your deck by two. He could work really well, and you might, since uh, you save a provision there, you could tweak some things to maybe get in Sheldon as well. Maybe Isengren's Council to get some more consistency. But that's a pretty pretty good play. Um, Ithlin, you don't need to play her final round, so she's actually a pretty good card to play right now. Everybody else I'm pretty happy with. Uh, Ethne being the only one I'm really missing, though. And Frixinet, uh, Triant Boar and Dunka are also good options. So we'll cycle him out. Yeah, Frixinet is pretty good. Uh, not quite as many points as Ethne, but um, you know, he boosts by two, and then he also is gonna spawn a young Dryad. So he gives you a lot of flexibility. If Lin is just another target, there's honestly no reason to save her in my opinion. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use her since I'm at eight cards. That'll get me another boost to a Glaïs. And it gives me a better chance to get three cards that are really going to be meaningful for next round. Um, Dunka, Hawker Smuggler being some good examples. Roderick DeWitt uh, gives him that passive coin boost. This is very similar if you've played Egmund with Northern Realms. Uh, if you've played uh, Herkia with uh, Syndicate. Or sorry, not Syndicate, with Sk uh, <laughs> Skellige. If you have played Dunka with Skuyatel. These are kind of that same, that unit does something that interacts really well with the faction every turn. It doesn't use an order, it has Veil, four points base with a one point armor, and then it can use its order to do three damage. Uh, Herkia being the one kind of weird version that uh, does damage on row, but Roderick also weird in that he spawns a Flaming Rose Footman, so he does not actually do any damage. Um, I'll say this when playing against this syndicate deck you just have to be very aware of the uh, of the row synergy the spawn synergy I, I'm anticipating seeing a lot of fallen knights that are gonna come out here uh, and Triant boar is gonna be a good a good use for us most of the cards that I'd want to lock are going to have veil so Moren here has lost some value for me so I'm gonna go ahead and put her back in 
Dumka is a much better option. Uh, I think ultimately I would have liked to have Milena, but these cards are all really good. Um, Milena is probably the only one I would really want. Maybe Fav, but Fav's just going to get me Call of the Forest. That could get me two Dryad Matrons. Um, but I think this boost is just worth more. Let's put in Train Talk, see what we get. And we get a Dryad Matron. That's fine. It's going to be an extra two points for our, um, for Huglais. So, big things to keep in mind here. You want your, symbi your symbiosis cards to go down before you start playing any of your nature cards. Um... The only nature card I think I'd really want to play that I might feel an urge to just for removal and boost is the circle of life. So when and if we see that come out, we will want to make a play for that. Um, also, shaping nature on the Hamadryad. So we're going to want to get Ethne out um, and start using her at some point. Um, but I don't think we need to be concerned with that yet. I think we should be more worried about our passive engines. Mahakam Defender has already been boosted, so he is going to go up by one. Um, Dunka and Hawker Smuggler are going to boost units by one. Theoretically, that could be worth two points on a Glaiis, so they might have been a better play for that. Um, but I, I'm not. There's no guarantee that it would go to her, and this way I sharpen the likelihood of those boosts going to a Glaiis. The only other one we want to worry about is Hamadryad getting boosted by turn 5. So I think how this is going to play, since he has very little removal and he's more concerned about defending his cards, is basically just get our boosts out uh, and then start focusing on using those boosts. Um, Triant Boar might be a good, a good choice for us here. Uh, but the Scarabs are going to feed into our other option. I think we just need to get out our boosts again just because it's worth so many points for us. Hama Dryad, Dryad Matron, these are going to be good, good options for us as well. I saw one really good deck uh, that I would actually suggest. These Fallen Knights are worth so many points by the end. Uh, use Igor the Hook to just get the maximum point potential. All right, now I think actually I'm okay with using Ethne out here. Yeah, we're gonna miss out on some passive point generation. I don't wanna feed him points. Well, let's see if we get, yeah, because then we can get Hamadryad with Shaping Nature down. So we'll use Hamadryad next, most likely, then take out one of these Firesworn Zealots just so we don't let them sit around using that Circle of Life. That also weeds out some more units from our hand. Frixinet also would be helpful to get down, I guess. And these Scarabs aren't going to transform, so. So Lieutenant Von Herst is a pretty good option. He's going to transform these Firesworn Zealots for a fee of one. That's going to boost all of them by one and give them one armor, which makes them impossible for me to get otherwise, um, but just something to keep in mind. And then this horde ability is really good as well. I think here we just want this Hamadryad out. And this is just going to be a battle of, of point boost and point slam, right? I just need as many of these points to go to Aglaïs as possible. And we have already fallen behind a little bit. Uh, but like I was saying, walking into this, um, I think the weaknesses for Syndicate that a lot of people have been worried about is this lack of removal. But as you're going to see, I just think their ability to outpace is kind of unprecedented. So, All right, so he does have one removal have in duel offer? there. Uh, and then one better really good removal deck I have seen is just using, uh, using a few, several crimes Ferco as your tutor, and then uh, Congregation, Banish, those are all great. Um, but then also using uh, your cut-ups with, um, with Horse on Senior. It's going to be a great option for you. All right, we just want to get this out just because we don't want to miss these points. Again, a lot of points every turn. Feeding onto that Hamadryad. 
and you can see that symbiosis between one, two, three, four units has spawned a four point wandering triant. We're gonna use this Frexinet out next turn. That'll give us a five point triant. Um, so really good uh, synergy with that. Um, I think this young dryad symbiosis uh, is pretty good token card. I mean, these Firesworn Zealots don't really give you anything, except that they can be transformed into Flaming Rose Footmen. So I think that uh, in terms of tokens, they're very on par with one another. This is a very good Sacred Flame is now much better. That order ability to boost all units in a row by one, especially now that people are no longer um, using that other card. All right, he's, it looks like he's gonna have one more uh potentially one more left all right so i think here we get frexing it out I no get fish we'll some aglaise. and i don't i mean we, i guess we could do three points of damage next round um but it's gonna boost it regardless right so it's a three point removal regardless of how i'm going about doing and again, five point Treon from that. Then we'll just go ahead and use this Treon Boar, start getting damage with that. And again, this is just very much like a point race. Uh, I think the, the better deck in terms of point race and upside point potential uh, that I think could probably beat Syndicate is Kikimor um, with uh, with Karen Thier spawn. I think Kikimor could get you a little bit more traction, um, but not too much. So the only other thing we should have thought about here is just uh, is, is just uh, row logging him, right? So I mean, Jacques misses. He typically spawns two Flaming Rose Footmen to the row. So he just missed out on six points. He also played Jacques pretty late, because whenever you play a Firesworn card, boost self by one, and almost everything he's played has been Firesworn. So, very interesting option here. He does, It is a tribute or, um, with a profit, so he can just retain the coins, which it looks like that was basically what his goal was. So let's get out Boar here. And I think basically what we're going to do, we'll probably just wear down on Jacques. Um, he's getting a lot of tightness in his rows. There's no reason for us to help him thin that out when we're just basically removing points. Now I think the question will be, where are we going to play Aglaïs? I'm thinking range row, so let's drop this Dryad Matron here. We can also do some four. And this game is going to be too close for my comfort. Looks like Aglaïs is going to go up to 25. Her base is 4, so she'll get an extra 21 points. Ferco with Desire is a great play here. I think I would have rather had that first round if I was him, but the ability to boost all of those units is just so awesome. Uh, and then Dunka's not getting us anything this turn because nobody's in hand, so we might as well damage Jock. Then we'll play down Aglaïs. And there's the win. So, uh, again, as you can see, a lot of upside potential here. It does actually pull us out in what I had considered one of the better row spawn decks um, with upside point potential. So, 119 points. He did use Duel to get a removal on my Hawker Smuggler. Uh, I think he probably waited a little bit too long to use that. Probably should have used that on Hawker Smuggler and Dunka. Probably to get rid of Dunka uh, and and get uh, Hawker Smuggler down too. Since she had armor, it would have done actually a pretty good amount of damage between the two of them. Um, but anyway, pretty fun. I, again, for me, if you are working on these Scoia'tael achievements like I am uh, this week, then this is the more fun way to do it. Uh, this is a really good deck to just have some fun with. Uh, I'll probably end up naming this something like uh, Ethne and Aglaeus. Uh I just think Aglaeus, sorry, is just a, a super fun point slam card to play. Just keep in mind, 
uh, especially if you're up against Skellige with Morkvarg um, or, or similar cards like that, something with like a Banish or an Igni, um, anything where you need to be, con where they're not playing Devotion cards, you must win first round so that you get final say with Hagla East. She's just so many points, uh, such a tall card. I mean, you saw there, she played for uh, what, 46 points? by the end right so 46 points that could have got wiped off the board just huge point slam final play for us that uh took us from way behind to ahead by two points so but hope you guys enjoyed this if you did please like please subscribe let me know what else you'd like to see in the channel let me know what other thoughts you're having again i'm going to be doing my gwent today update every week i think there's going to be a decent amount of stuff to talk about this week especially with the hot fix um, but also a shift in the meta is occurring. I'm feeling like, especially uh, really liking these Gaunter challenges to force people into using new leaders, using new cards, and then forcing these uh, this new leapfrog of meta um, where we're now seeing a lot of these row spawn, a lot of row boost, a, a lot of, uh, and a lot of tutoring going on. So, but anyway, uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching. Get out there, enjoy, and keep on Gwenting.